Hey guys, we're back here um, for some alchemy today. Um, it's been a couple days here, and so I, I normally try to get a video out as often as possible, um, but I've gotten pretty busy here in the last couple days, and so I'm still gonna, going forward, try to get a video out as often as I can, um, but it may not be every day. So anyways, um, I ended up qualifying for the qualifier weekend. I, I played in one of the plans, the best of three, um, the other day when I was at work on my tablet and ended up going 4-0 with this mono red alchemy deck that I kind of showcased in my last um, best of one and sort of with the changes that I made a couple days ago. So I do want to give a shout out um, to you guys, you know, also to Will specifically. Um, I appreciate you for kind of prompting me to see if I can look at sort of the best cards in the deck, you know, or in this format for this type of deck. And it did end up going 4-0, so I've been very, very happy with it. Um, this is the deck with the changes since the last, I think this is the exact same list that I had in my last video, kind of prepping for the qualifier weekend. But uh, at any rate, here it is again. So kind of before I get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a comment or a like, and sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. Um, for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting. You guys are really the backbone that makes this channel work, and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much. So... Just uh, kind of getting to the deck really quickly before hopping into the qualifier weekend. I ended up settling on um, kind of like nine one-drop threats here. I ended up going with a split of three frantic scapegoat, which I have still liked, and it's been pretty good. Um, two copies of Phoenix Chick and four copies of Monastery Swift Spear. Part of the reason for the inclusion of Phoenix Chick as well is because we don't have access to Kumano Faces Kakazan, which is a premier threat and available in Standard, but not available in Alchemy. I also went back up to four copies of Tectonic Hazard, which is kind of a stand-in for End the Festivities, which is available in Standard, but not Alchemy. And this is really good right now, because there are a lot of decks that do, you know, some version of the um, Convoke nonsense. And so being able to AoE is pretty important. Um, the other removal suite we've got, four copies of Melt Through is the sort of the best replacement for Play With Fire, and four copies of Lightning Strike in tandem with four copies of Invasion of Tarkir. This has been the MVP of the deck. Um, this has like single-handedly won me most of the matches uh, when I went 4-0. So just being able to get you know dominance on the board and then keep it by flipping Defiant Thunder Maw pretty much won me most of those matches. So I cannot stress enough how important this is in mono red if you're gonna be running this in alchemy um, or standard really. And then um, Inti has been a nice addition. I actually, I really do like this sort of as a one of. Um, I did go down to three copies of Codebreaker just because I sort of wanted the maximum benefit, um, but I still wanted to have like one drops that fit the curve and I wanted inclusion but four copies of Rally of the Hornburg, which has just been fantastic. So getting two tokens that have haste for two mana, and it's a spell which activates both um, benefits Fugitive Codebreaker and Swiss Spear has been amazing. Also, it helps turn on Godric, which I've left as a one of, which has been great every time it's hit the board. Um, and I kind of just decided that I, yeah, I didn't really have room to go up to like two Godric, um, or two copies of Devastator. I just wanted some of these other effects more. And I ended up cutting like the Squee and the Invasion of Ragatha, which are both great. Um, but I think Squee is actually less good in this format than it is in Standard. Um, so there's a lot of stuff it runs into. And so cutting the Squee was pretty easy. Cutting the Invasion of Ragatha is a little bit harder, um, but I think it's still fine. We have enough ways to flip Invasion just with all the extra burn that we've got. And I've never really felt like it's been hard to flip Invasion. So, yeah. Um, also kind of lowering the curve a little bit, only having one top end here at three. 
you know, just sort of makes the deck a lot easier to run smoothly. Um, and it also helps justify the invasion of four copies of Mishra's Foundry, which has been great. Like, I definitely would keep all four of these in here at 21 land. Um, so yeah, it doesn't stress your mana as much. And then the sideboard has been amazing. Um, being able to go into four copies of Lithomantic Barrage against any kind of blue-white deck. Um, four copies of Furnace Rain against, like, sort of the bigger threat, shielded nonsense sort of decks. Um, Witch Doctor's Frenzy, three copies, has been incredible against any kind of, like, go-wide strategy that does have, like, bigger creatures or, like, lifelink creatures. And then four copies of Urbask Forge against, like, the total, like, removal decks, like, kill everything you play kind of decks has been also great. So, yeah, all that said, we are going to hop in to the Qualifier Weekend, day one. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. All right, here we go. We have got can get up to, I guess, one loss before we're knocked out. We need seven wins to advance, and everything here is gravy, so I guess we get at least 500 gems even if we get knocked out. Definitely feeling the nerves a little bit because I just don't know this format that well. And I've only played in like the the qualifier plans. But it does seem like, um, yeah, this hand is fine. It, it does seem like, you know, mostly it's kind of these sort of go wide decks or like the all removal kind of things. Um, so there are some similarities to standard, which has been nice. I think this this could be blue-white control. Looks like blue-white control. Um, there's a possibility they go for like uh, reinforcements here if they're sort of more of a go-wide deck. But either way, we're going to run out the Swift Spear and see what they do. Can't remember if this format has access to Divine Purge or if that's just like Pioneer. I, to be honest, I just don't remember. Um, here, I think we just wait to see what they do. We don't want to get blown out. We could have pushed Melt through, like, if we knew for certain that they weren't. So now I think that they're definitely just blue white control. But, like, up till last turn, they could have been, like, go wide, perhaps. So here I'm happy to start, like, throwing damage at face. And just, uh, yeah, start burning. I'm not going to use Rage, just because there could be a blowout here. But I will be happy to just end up shooting face here. Um, so they could have board wipe here, so like I'm gonna hold the code breaker. And then, yeah, we'll just pass. Okay, so they do have the temporary lockdown. I wasn't sure if this set kind of was running lockdown or divine purge. I guess it's going to be lockdown in this case.
I think even though we could have maybe pushed the extra damage if the Codebreaker had lived here, I kind of wanted to do that end of turn just to keep our mana sort of more open in case we drew something like Phoenix Chick, for instance. And I think here, like, we could try to, like, have this go face down to try to flip up, but I think we just kind of want to try to end the game here if we can. This way, if they counter the code breaker, we can still go check plus rage for the win. Okay, and that's fine. All right, so against blue white, we're definitely bringing in forge. Full for the full play set, because um, they're going to be wiping the board constantly. And then we'll bring in Lithomanic Barrage as well for any kind of Planeswalkers. Um, so I think weaker cards here... I feel like it's really easy to get blown out with Monstrous Rage, so I'm probably going to cut that. I feel like damage that just goes straight to face is a bit more useful. Um, and then... Probably melt through is not as strong here. It it does go straight to face, which is nice, but it's um, actually I think maybe hazard is probably going to be weaker here. I don't. They might have like sunset tokens, but um, it's not an amazing play because it doesn't even hit planeswalkers. So I think maybe cutting hazard is okay, and then. Maybe like one scapegoat. Like we do want to have definitely a certain number of um, creatures, but I think we can go a little bit lower in that regard. It is a recurring source of damage, which is nice. <sighs> kind of want to put like one rage back in. I know it's, but uh, like a well-timed rage can still be really good. Having enough creatures. I guess because like I don't expect them to have a lot of creatures for us to like menace past. Scapegoat is a little weaker. So I think I'm just gonna hedge here and just like leave in one copy of Rage because I think it could still find decent targets. I'm not sure about this. Definitely kind of going on feel. Like in that last game, it was like the perfect answer there at the end. Um, yeah, I don't want to keep a one lander here, unfortunately. We have no way to, yeah, two land I will definitely keep, but not a one lander, unless it like was a much better one lander than that. Um, yeah, this looks fine. I think we throw back one of the melt through, just not as strong um, as like a recurring source of damage. So I'm not entirely sure what they bring in here, but I assume it's, you know, some life linkers or like some big kind of more board wipes, that kind of thing. If we just hold the melt through because I don't really know what their their plan is, what they're up to. Um, and then I guess we just run out Codebreaker here. We could go Invasion, but I don't think the plan to flip Invasion is super good. Actually, with that in mind, maybe it's better to... You know, actually Invasion might be a card that I should have boarded out instead because it's just not that good in this matchup. So maybe going into, if it does go a to a third game, maybe consider taking out Invasion. Alright, I think let's... Um, could just go for Gadget. I kind of want a double spell here, though. But I suppose it does walk into, like, Lockdown, if they've got it. Hmm. I think I'll start with Codebreaker just because they know about it. Let's see what they do. And then I think maybe hedging here with Melt Through instead of playing out multiple threats for the possible lockdown. Yeah, I'm not really sure.
I think Swift Spear plus using some of these map tokens is probably fine. We could go for Invasion, um, but again, that kind of a little bit walks into, you know, potential lockdown. I guess Godric is also fine. It's They may not have... We can start with Godric, and if they don't counter it, I suppose we can go with Swift Spear. Or use one of these uh, map tokens. Yeah, I think I'd rather use a map token here. Okay, now I think we can Swift Spear plus Tark here. Yeah, here I think we just go for the Reveler. Since we've got the Devastator, there is some benefit to flipping this. Problem is if they have, again, Lockdown, we're just potentially wasting some time trying to flip it. But I think there's enough benefit to go for it. thing about this is that when they play the one ring we can still do damage to the invasion so even though we can't attack them we can finish the invasion and I think let's go ahead and use this map token with the rest of our mana um this doesn't seem like a super great card right now. It's better than a land, but... I'm trying to think if we want to maybe get something, try to get something better. I guess it's it's not a mountain, so I'm happy to keep it. Since we know we're not drawing land, I'm just going to hold the land here. Wow, Stern's Golding is nasty. That's pretty good.
Yeah, I guess we haven't seen any Planeswalkers. I don't know if they're going to have them. We are at 16, so damage is a real thing here. Uh, we could just melt through this Orcs and try to save this for potentially something bigger. Um, but we could also just barrage it and try to, like, maybe get some other stuff for the melt through to deal with a 3-3, which will potentially cause an issue here. So, yeah, I guess I'm just going to... Not sure if it's correct, but our life total is a resource. I suppose we could have, like, used both of those against the 3-3. Three, three. Maybe we should have done that instead. But now that they're drawing, like, tons of cards, we're in a pretty bad spot. And that is a nasty combo. Yeah, Prof's memory with the one ring. Whew. That's pretty nuts. Um, it's going to be really hard to race. I think we're just done here, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we're just going to game three. Okay, so I think maybe Invasion is not as good, especially in light of Temporary Lockdown. And so... Maybe we keep the Scapegoats and the Monstrous Rages. That feels like it might be a little bit better. I'm going to try that instead. Yeah, because it can be like kind of a trap trying to flip the battle if they have all kinds of removal. So this looks really good. Let's go ahead and keep this. Got a nice turn one, turn two. Having a full hand of seven feels good too. Um, I think let's use Rage while it's a good option. So I think just Rage on the Phoenix Chick feels pretty good here. We could have pushed with Codebreaker, but I think finding a good window to get the Rage out feels pretty good. Now I like Swift Spear plus Melt Through feels really good. Again, even if they have the uh, lockdown next turn, just pushing this damage now feels great. Could have also gone for like Lightning Strike, I suppose. Um, change the equation, sure. Here they need lockdown if they haven't got it. They're in such a rough spot. So lightning strike is lethal, but they probably have counters. Um, we just go code breaker here. See what they do. Alright, so now that we just set up, um, we could crack some clues here. Could also, like, 
try to lightning strike them on their turn, which isn't a bad idea. So I think they expect to board wipe next turn, so. Hmm. Like lightning strike in response to them board wiping is pretty good. Because if we like draw into something, we can just kill them. And I feel like that that is better than trying to use these map tokens. Because these these are already probably dead. And they had the lockdown. That's awkward. Hoping they'd have to go for like full sunfall. So here they probably have changed the equation, but we still gotta go for it. So now we run out into, I guess we hold the mountain. Scapegoat could do it here. So I think we do barrage just to get this thing off the, the playing field if we draw like another scapegoat. I think it is worth getting rid of this. I think we just go for it like I guess we could do it on their upkeep to be slightly yeah let's do it on their upkeep just so we spend their turn if they've got us like a counter spell got there Alright, that second game was pretty loose, but third game I think we tightened it up a bit. So this is the one this is a one net lander that I actually will keep. Like everything is one cast and it's all like amazing spells. Especially since our deck tops out at two with the exception of one copy of Godric, I feel a lot better about holding keeping a one lander. Opponent is down a card, which always helps. Okay, so this is, I think, like Naya, uh, lots of guys kind of stuff. So here we, I think we just want to melt through, just kind of keep their creatures down. Um, we could go for a scapegoat here, but I think denying their mana feels pretty good. So here we could double scapegoat. We could start getting rage through. I think actually rage is probably the move. Just swift spear plus rage feels pretty good.
I don't know if this one runs like if I guess if they run like the one one that also taps for dinosaur mana that may not be good enough in their deck but if they do keeping the tectonic hazards in feels pretty good like they do have like a number of x2s here so it's not as amazing but I guess if we see like more of these or more x1s could possibly keep it in And then here, I don't know if it's better to shut down mana or just keep pushing damage. This is tough. Um, again, we have another opening here for Monstrous Rage. So, like, we might need that to push through damage at some point, but... I kind of feel like Phoenix Chick plus Monstrous Rage feels pretty good. And then just trying to burn them down by going face. Like, the other downside, though, is that they could have, like, Dracosaur mana next turn, so maybe we need to burn down their Paleontologist, keep them on three. Because I guess they really have four with the, the Shepherd. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the burn plan here. See if we can get him low enough to burn him out. Because now they basically have like six mana with their scales speaker, so I don't think we can like keep them off mana anymore. This way, if they like play like a big threat, we can go like double scapegoat and just push a little bit of damage, and then try to get him in burning range. So yeah, I think that's the plan. We're at 16, like, we can take a full hit here, go down to 5. So I think the play here is just double scapegoat. Shove aside is interesting. Okay, so now they've got all of our guys covered except for like one scapegoat. Um, can try to like live through next turn and draw like lightning strike for the win. Um, 
can get trample also though, which is awkward. So if we go lightning strike, this goes up to four toughness. We take three, seven, block another here. It's uh, it's still it's not enough. I don't know that we've got enough here. Um, I guess we see if they like push all out, but I don't think we can attack. We don't have good attacks here. I think we need all of our mana. Like, we need to cast Lightning Strike this turn or their turn, or otherwise we lose. Because like Code Breaker isn't good enough. So I think we just like maybe they make the wrong attack here. I think that's our best play. Yeah, unfortunately they got, like with the trample on Ceratops, it's really nasty. Not entirely sure what they're in the tank here for. Um, yeah, I guess if they push with everything, we probably lose because we can only soak. Yeah, if we had the mana for like lightning strike there, that would have been sweet, but. Plus the Phoenix check. I think if they all in, we're probably dead. Because we can only soak four, six points. Hmm. So I can we block here, like we're just taking too much, right? Yeah. Oh, and these can't even block. Ha! Ah, I forgot about that. All right, yeah, that's that's a problem. Yeah, that's going to do it, unfortunately. Okay, so we need to get the jump on them. Um, Frenzy is going to be really good here. Furnace Reigns is really good. Barrage doesn't really do anything. Um, so what is weaker here? I think Hazard could be good, depending on if they're running like the the one one that taps for dinosaurs and they might be but i don't know if they are because they're running like the the one two and like this is not good against the one two so i feel like maybe cut hazard here it just it seems like a weaker card unfortunately because their creatures are larger um scapegoat is okay but not amazing but it is nice having like a one drop that push a little bit of damage I do think it's one of the weaker one drops though like Rage, Phoenix Chick, and Swift Spear are just better um, yeah I could see cutting Scapegoat I guess or at least like a couple copies I think yeah I think Scapegoat maybe is the weakest card All right, opening hand looks good. Got stuff to do. A little bit of removal. Like we don't have the breathing room for Urbrask's Forge, I don't think. But like stealing their stuff seems better.
I guess our opponent is considering whether to mulligan. Yeah, and they ended up going down to six, which is nice. I think I want to start here with Codebreaker because the Codebreaker into Invasion feels pretty good. They could have like the deal three damage nonsense. Yeah, shove aside. Hmm. So in light of that, might have been better to rally, but I think it was a better potential upside if they didn't have the shove aside. So here, let's just invasion. Now we can... Rally is not amazing. I guess we can Phoenix Chick plus Lightning Strike and get it next turn. And that feels pretty good. Although killing Pawnee's Hatcher is a pretty big game, honestly. Because then they don't get to hatch. Yeah, I think we want to kill Hatcher here. It's just too big of a swing. We can draw this stuff to get rid of this invasion. This way, if we draw, like, Monstrous Rage or something like that, we can just deal with this invasion. We can just kind of keep working on it. Um, we could attack with Foundry here. Otherwise, I guess we could cast Rally and then lose one of the tokens. Eh, this feels better. Okay, so now we can rage it down, which feels great. Um, yeah, I think we just do that and then rally. Actually, since we can rally, we could rally, like rage one of the rally tokens. That's probably the move. If they want to block with Paleontologist, we're happy to, to get that out of the way. I guess like if we attack with all three, they like block here, block here. This goes up to a... F yeah, then we still have enough to push damage, so I think we can attack with all three safely here. Unless they've got removal. Like we do lose a token, but I think it's worth going for. Um, oh, you know, I guess we could have also just Witch Doctored Frenzy, but I think this accomplishes what we want. As long as they don't blow us out. And they have the... Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, this is definitely not an enchantment. <laughs> so 
So I think we need to get rid of this paleontologist because they can start getting stuff from their yard. Um, so maybe dinosaur spells. They don't quite have enough mana to do either of these, of these two, but I think they can... Let's see, does it return it to their hand? I don't know if they can recur the Carnosaur. They might be able to. <sighs> Guess we could Furnace Rains plus Rally. That kind of gets it done. Yeah, I think I actually like that. Oh no, but we don't have enough mana to do all of it. Okay, so I think we set it up for next turn. So I think we Phoenix Chick. Plus Frenzy here. Get rid of the Paleontologist. If they do a big push now, we can get it with Rally. Okay, so I think we just flip plus double Rally here. And we can start going face, I suppose. Because we are definitely like our, our creatures are definitely worse than theirs. So if they eat one of our one ones, like we're at 14, they push for five. Well, I guess they can't attack into our invasion. So yeah, I think we probably do just push damage here. Try to shorten the game as much as possible. So they're representing the three damage thing. The either shove aside or carnosaur. Certainly not blocking. Trying to think if they can draw anything to just kill us. Like, Polani's Hatcher gives them an extra three. So that'd be like... Three, six, eight, it's not enough. So we can just push with Foundry and everything. And then I think just do the two damage on their Halfling. I think that's the move. Um, we still don't need their Furnace Reigns here, I don't think. Edge of a side that makes sense. Now 
Now that we've got their token out of the way, we can furnace rams. Alright, so if we furnace rams their haywire might, they can't just sack it, right? Oh, they can sack it. Creature enchantment. Actually, they don't have any legal targets. So they can't sacrifice it. So if we furnace rains that, we're pushing six, seven, ten, eleven. Yeah, we can just kill them with furnace rains here. Yeah, I like our plan. Our sideboard plan feels pretty good. Yeah, in standard, Twisted Frenzy is a, it's a better card for the sideboard, but we didn't have access to that in Alchemy, so um, Furnace Reigns works as a stand-in. All right, Hamlet's great. It's a nice turn two invasion. So this is nice, we can go rally into Witch Doctor Frenzy here. Um, I'm not sure if it's the best use of our Frenzy, but I think that like pushing damage on the invasion and also getting rid of their scale speaker shepherd is pretty important. Other like other possible plays just invasion just to get rid of their shepherd, but that kind of slows down our, our pressure. Actually, oh, never mind. We don't have enough mana for Frenzy plus Rally. <sighs> Could just Rally here. We don't have a way to finish this off, though, so I think we have to take the slow approach and Invasion their Shepherd. It's not ideal, but we can double Rally next turn. Furnace Rams is decent. What's the play? I guess we can Rally plus Frenzy. Like, they draw a card, but I think that's probably okay. Because we can't use Ripjaw Raptor to just take out their invasion yet. And this, We want this to be like an endgame kind of thing. 
So I think like rally plus frenzy here is probably fine. I guess they're representing perhaps um, they could have like the shove aside here so if we go to like foundry and then like pump it they could blow us out so I think the safer play is probably rally plus single foundry so if they want to kill one we at least get some damage in it's not ideal but I think it's better than just trying getting blown out This way, because we expect them to have some sort of removal here. Okay, well that's nice. We can furnace rains that. I guess they could also have the shove aside. But to, like if they tap out here, then we'll be feeling a lot better about they'd have to have shove aside and not carnosaur in that case. So now, hmm, Furnace Reigns is okay, but if we just rally, we can flip this for sure. They do get two free kills though in that case, which I'm not a super huge fan of. I think we I think we furnace rains here because then we can get some damage potentially on both of them. So now they need to have shove aside. Like we can go like this, and that forces like a block, like a bad block here. Otherwise, we get some free damage in. The downside here is if they do have shove aside, they can stop us from flipping this. But then like we at least have three damage on one of these. So if we draw like a shock or like a, you know, replacement shock kind of thing we have. I think this is probably the best. Like they don't, I don't think they have shove aside here. I think they would have used it. It didn't feel like they had shove aside there. 
Um, they could have another Spiteful Banditry, so I'm not sure if we play Hornburg here, but I think like we want to untie our mana a little bit since we've got this Foundry. So I feel like Hornburg is probably okay. I might be wrong. Maybe I should have held it. I'm not really sure. Yeah, this is nice. So now we can get double Thunder Law, and this feels pretty good to have double Dragon going. Oh, wow. That's even better. Okay, so if we invasion their Halfling. And then Thunder Maw. Otherwise, we could just, like, invasion the Tarkir, and then we... It's actually, yeah, it's almost as good, because then we get double triggers. It's about the same, really. I think we just invasion the invasion. This way we get double triggers when we attack. Then we can do... We can like kill one of their frillbacks, or do I think we just go face here? Like we don't care about these frillbacks. Um, yeah, I think that's what we do. We just push, push damage to face. So yeah, single trigger goes here. Other trigger goes face. Now, even if they kill one, like we're still pushing 16 damage just in the air. Yeah, and Tranquil Frillback's not going to do it. We can go to 23, but we have more than enough. Furnace France doesn't even matter. This is 12 plus 2, 4, 6. Yeah, they're just dead. Uh, this hand doesn't work. Um, I don't want to go down to five, so I think it's got to keep this. All right, not sure if we're up against the same deck or not, but 
Could also be like the Naya uh, go wide deck. So I think we just shut down their mana a little bit here. Um, yeah, because I don't really feel like trading Rage plus Scapegoat. Arwen is super nasty. I wonder if Melt Through works on Indestructible. Like, it won't die now, but... I guess it would just sit there until, it, like... It... If they ever take the counter off, though, I feel like it would die. It's an interesting, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious how that, that interaction works. Huh. Yeah, if it would just die to state-based effects. So I think here, I'm trying to decide, like, Having like answers to both because then they don't get any lifelink counters feels pretty good. Destructible counter. Yeah, I think just having reactions is better, but like pushing damage is good too. I don't really know. I think I'm just gonna go with Monstrous Rage here. So now, like if we shoot them with lightning strike, then they just, get the lifelink counters. Oh man. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely a mistake to tap out here. Problem is now they can just easily block. Unfortunately, we do we wait here? If we push, they just block. I think we wait. I think we can lightning strike face. We still have the removal up for Arwen if they respond. Invasion is interesting.
Yeah, invasion is potentially how we do this. Just keep going face here. We want to set it up where we can just flip invasion in one turn. I think we just sit. So we could get Tark here going here, but they would make um, something else lifelike. I think we wait. See what they do. Could kill Shieldred here. We need our, our dragon to win this, though. So they gain five, eight. Oh, God, our one is beating. Yeah, I think we've got a. Oh, this is unfortunate. I think we have to deal with Shieldred here. Oh, and they've got Plaza. Oh, I forgot about Plaza. Yeah, oh, that's a beating. I think unfortunately that's going to do it. I, the plaza was I did not see the plaza, so yeah, Arwen is a real beating. Um, how to deal with Arwen? Barrage. Guess is good there. If they're running around with shield, I feel like Furnace Reigns is good. So is Frenzy. I think we probably cut Scapegoat, Rage, and maybe Feldon. Bring in Frenzy. I feel like Barrage is, is decent. Doesn't hit everything they have, but it does. I guess it hits Arwen. Rains is nice. Yeah, maybe a split here feels pretty good. OK, 
Okay, this hand looks good. Oh yeah, I, I guess I forgot about Hazard. I don't know if Hazard's gonna be good in this deck or not. It didn't seem amazing, honestly. Like, they have a lot of creatures, but they have, like, X2s. So probably maybe take out some hazards and then uh, make ra make room for, like, the extra, like, furnace rains and stuff like that. Yeah, like, Barrage is not good against Loam Speaker. Um, I guess let's just play Inti here. Probably lose a barrage. That was nice. Uh, yeah, Barrage feels pretty good. Getting Godric going feels good too, though. Could just make this thing a 3-4 Trample. That works also. But, I mean, getting their Crucius out of the way is good. <sighs> yeah, so stop talking. Um... We just barrage. And then I think we hold our cards here. Actually, I suppose we get rid of the furnace range. The furnace rains. That feels pretty good. Unless they've got a board wipe, this is looking pretty good. Moving going to soar. Savage stomp. Okay, that was pretty nasty. Uh, that was really nasty, actually. Savage Stomp. Wait here. Try to push damage. I guess if we swing with both, like we can, we can push some damage here. They probably kill Inti. I feel like we need the damage though, since this is a a reach creature. I think we just want to kind of. Melt through doesn't do it, so I think we do get rid of it and just try to spread damage out. such a nice draw. We're still two for winning ourselves, but I think this is how we win this game.
yeah, I think we're still just pushing damage here. Like, they get to eat Godric, but... Let's play like Lightning Strike off the top wins. Spawning pods kind of neat. Codebreaker. So we can flip it. Oof. Can we survive an attack though? They get to spawning pod twice. Yeah, not sure if we can survive this this turn, but if we make it through this turn, Lightning Strike is pretty sweet. Probably gonna do it right there. Yeah, it is not quite enough, quickly enough, unfortunately. Tough beats. All right, I think we're two and one. So, got to win out.
Hand looks good. Could burn that. I think we just want to like push damage here with scapegoat though. This deck runs Arwen also, for sure. It's definitely going to be hard to fight through. Although Hazard is decent. I guess we could Swift Spear here and then push with both. It could swing back for a decent amount. Otherwise we just play Swift Spear and push for one. And I think that's that's maybe not the worst. Because then Swift Spear can hold off most of their team. Yeah, I think that's probably right. We just kind of need time to get going. Reinforcements. I guess they might have like a knight errant at Eos here. It sort of looks like it. Oof, Loxodon is nasty. Yuck. Melt through doesn't really help us too much here. I guess we could get rid of one of their C note scouts. Could go Godric here. Um, we're just facing down a lot of damage, though. No good attacks. Yeah, Tectonic Hazard is feeling very underpowered right now. Yeah, I think now we want to suspect just so we can block with the other one.
All right, so we dropped to nine. There's like still a chance we can draw into like another tectonic hazard, which isn't amazing, but it's something. Now I think we can maybe suspect the swift spear, I guess, because then we can block with our scapegoat. Yeah, I don't think we want to though. Yeah, this is brutal. They could have blocked our scapegoat there, but they didn't even care. Oh god, we should have hazarded right there. That was a mistake. Yeah, that actually was a pretty serious mistake. <sighs> they could have probably all end us here, but they didn't. Um... I think we just take four here. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. 10 10 trample oof yeah so i think if, if we'd killed some of these one ones this wouldn't be as large we'd probably still be dead but okay so i think that the tectonic hazard is good against them just if they can get off their convokers it's really nasty so i think we definitely want all four barrages probably all three frenzies And then what seems less good? Scapegoat actually seems pretty bad against them. <laughs> not sure what else to cut here. Maybe Feldon because it can't block. It's not super amazing. Yeah, like the melt through is good. Um, I guess rage. Rage is nice for like pushing through, but it maybe is a little weaker. Okay, I think we cut some number of rage and maybe Maybe like a code breaker. Actually, I think I want to keep maybe an extra rage. All right, opening hand looks good. In that last game, our deck definitely felt underpowered with all of their Convoke nonsense. I think only having Hazard is really rough. Oh uh, yeah, let's just rally here, just to be efficient. I do kind of like live in mortal fear of if them playing Arwen. <laughs> it's such a crazy busted card. Um, I kind of want to lightning strike this, but I feel like we should save it. 
This card does get out of control quickly, though. Yeah, I think... Hmm. Otherwise, we like Swift Spear plus Phoenix Chick. I think we just keep the board clean. Actually, I guess the other play here is we could Swift Spear and attack. Yeah, I kind of like this because then we can hazard after blocks. It's a little bit sneaky, but I'm all for it. Happy to drop Godric, get that going. I don't think it was quite worth pushing like one extra damage and losing a guy there. That's kind of unfortunate. I think maybe we just hold back Godric and then push with everything else here. So I don't want to trade Godric plus Lightning Strike, but I would trade the other creatures plus Lightning Strike. Maybe should have saved Lightning Strike for face. Ah, oh, case is nasty. Yeah, I feel like we need more AoE against this deck. Okay, that's a nice pickup. Um, I guess we can two for one them, which is good enough. So yeah, I think we just, I guess we kill Inspector plus Haywire Might over just killing their Amara. Well, I suppose if we kill Amara, then we can keep pushing with our next foundry. I think it's not great, but... Maybe it's better to kill Amara here. Yeah, I think maybe it's better to kill Amara. Imidanes is pretty nasty here. They can Amara into Imidanes. Okay, locks it on Restore. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah, tons more Convoke creatures that I have never seen. <sighs> yeah, 
this is rough. Um, I don't think we can win at this point, but I think... Yeah, because I think like, next turn they just go like Imidanes, and that's game. We're very close to it. Plus Helix. Yeah, we can, we can get rid of the Restore, but that's going to do it. Oh, all right, well, we went two and two. Um, I think, you know, in light of seeing some of the decks we're up against, we would need a better plan for, like, AoE with Mono Red, which doesn't really have as much support, um, at least that I've seen, in Alchemy. And again, this is not a format that I really play in at all, so was happy to go 2-2. Two and two. We got 3,000 gems. Um, yeah, could have done better probably, but I'm happy with this. So thanks guys for watching. Really do appreciate you. And uh, let's just take a look at the stats of this deck to see sort of how it's done. All right, so let's see. Let me jump in real quick. So most of it has just been in events. Almost all of the, the games from this deck has been in events. So overall, we're at 67% win rate, so 12 wins and six losses. So, you know, and, and some of these events were pretty high powered. I mean, like plans and like the qualifier weekend. Um, yeah, it ended up ended up going seven and two yesterday, um, three and two before that, and then two and two today. So overall, I don't think it's a bad deck. I think that you know you do you would need to change a little bit to like cinch up some of the matches against the super go wide decks. But the um, the general plan with the invasion of Tarkir is a really good one, and I think if you give that more support, maybe that's just going to be like a better overall game plan just to have so anyways thanks guys for watching i appreciate you and we will see you in the next one